Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, I'm going to be editing a photo of my daughter. I photographed her earlier today, and I just said, you know what? I think that I should do another portrait update because I tend to take a lot of photos of my family, and this photo was just a really good one. So here we are. All right. Now, as you can see, this photo was shot a little underexposed. Uh, and if you look at the histogram, it's like crazy underexposed. And this is a raw image. So I'm going to be able to re recall a good portion of that detail and information that's in the shadows. But just know that shadows is where the noise lives or noise lives in shadows. So when you start to pull up the shadow of an image, you might start to introduce noise. So we'll take a look at that. But the first thing that I like to do when I'm modifying a portrait is going through my camera presets, or I'm sorry, my camera profiles, uh, because you can see that that has an impact on the histogram in the upper right there. And uh, the one that I think is going to work the best is going to be on one portrait. And, you know, this is a portrait, so it fits. But the challenge that I still have is... I've only got about half of my dynamic range. Now, I didn't intend for this photo to come out too dark or as dark as it is. Uh, I was shooting at ISO 500 and I was at 2.8 on a 50 millimeter lens uh, at a hundredth of a second. So this should have exposed a little bit better. I don't know why it didn't expose as well as it did minus the exposure value. I had my exposure compensation down by two stops. So that's what ended up causing this image to be underexposed. The good news is I know roughly about how far under this is. And when you get to editing a photo, since I know that it's about two stops underexposed, that means I'm losing uh, half of my dynamic range. That's just... And that may not be a scientifically perfect example or explanation of that, uh, but just know that if you are underexposing your images, you're losing dynamic range in your overall uh, sensor, in which case now we're going to recall that data. Now, the way that I want to recall this data is probably by pulling out on the whites. And I'm also going to open up my shadows. And then I'm also going to move the exposure over to the right. And you can see now my histogram is actually starting to spread out and I'm getting more of my dynamic uh, value back. So this is the before without the uh, updates that we just made. And this is the after. Now, this is making the photo look a little bit more flat. So the way that I'm going to bring back some of that contrast and that edginess to the image is by pulling down on my blacks over here to the left. And that means that I probably should modify the midtones a little bit now. And so I'm just going to pull those to the right. That's going to open everything else up. And then let's see what we can get with our highlights here. I think that the image overall does need highlights in it. Holding down the J key, you can see that I have the hair uh, blown out, but I'm actually okay with that. I'm not looking for much detail in my daughter's hair today, so I'm not going to worry about that. The goal with the histogram is to move this far right side over to the right side whenever you are severely underexposed like I was. Uh, but you don't want to do it so much that you're going to blow out the image or lose information that you may want to have, which is usually further to the right on the dynamic range or scale of your particular image. Information on the left side usually is not as important, or at least I don't believe it is. Now, that's subjective, so take that with a grain of salt, but just know that that's what I think. So I showed you the before and after there. Now it's time to really start to modify this image. Now, I, I think that this works great straight out of camera and I could just go ahead and print this and my wife and my daughter, they'll probably love it. Uh, but what we're going to do is kind of try to give this a stylistic look. I have no idea what look I want to go for, but we're going to go with it. This is all I'm going to do in the develop setting. Now we're going to move over to effects. And I think the first thing that I want to do is throw a curves filter on here. 
And before I do anything, I'm going to click the gear icon and go to luminosity as the blend mode. The reason I do this is because I don't want to modify the color when I add my contrast, which I think that this image can use a little bit of contrast, but I also want to make it a little bit more flat. So I'm just going to pull up on my blacks here until the image gets a little bit lighter. And if I hold down the J key, you can see I'm not actually burning anything out anymore, which is good. The bad news is, is it looks really flat and washed out. So what I do is put a slight little S curve in here and I don't want this to be a unpunchy uh, looking image. Now, I don't like what that just did as far as the highlights go. Uh, there's too much of a separation. So I'm just going to right click and remove that control point because we now have removable control points on the curves module. And I love this because I am a huge fan of using curves. Now, I'm going to pull this down just a little bit. Maybe I don't need to wash out the image all that much. Uh, and then I'm going to try and make the shadow area not so uh, choppy. Like if I turn this off, you can see it's pretty choppy. Uh, and if I turn it back on, it just kind of fades all of that area out. And I just want her skin to overall look as smooth as I can possibly make it as well as as nice as I can possibly make it right. It's a portrait we're working on here. And whenever you have shadows, sometimes you can run into issues where the shadows themselves look a little weird, like what we're getting in this particular image, um, especially since I flattened this so much. What may be helpful here is removing this adjustment from the shadowed area just a touch. And I think we'll look at a before and after. This is just kind of opening up that overall look. Now, I could do some dodging and burning and really try to even out the exposure here, which I think may be of value. So I'm going to go and try a, ne a new method. You know, I've never done this before, but I'm going to hit the letter M on the keyboard to get my masking bug. I'm going to grab a vignette, click right here in the middle, and I'm going to make this an edges type of adjustment. We're going to shrink this in and I'm going to put this over just her face. OK, just like that. Now, what I want to do is actually open up the exposure. And I want to open up the shadows. Because again, we're, we're trying to go for a more even look on her face. The problem is right now, this is impacting the entire area of her face. And I don't necessarily want that. So what I'm going to do is try to remove this from the highlight section. And the way that I'm going to do that is by pulling this away from the highlights by clicking the blend mode options, or at least the option key to get the blend modes, and then pull down or up to remove this from the highlights. And you can see that's kind of actually working pretty well. I'm not gonna lie. Let's go ahead and turn this off and turn it back on. And you can see it's still brightening her face a little more than I would probably like for it to. So maybe I should pull uh, or use a brush to really kind of even this out. But if I'm looking at the overall photo here, you can see that her face is brighter and it's more evenly lit, uh, even though there's these highlights over here. Hopefully that made sense. If it didn't, just drop it in the comment section below. And, you know, I would love to talk about that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and rename this uh, dodge because that's essentially what we did there and we just pulled it away from the highlights now I'll try one more thing just to see what happens uh, and I don't think that that's going to work and neutrals makes it look even worse so yeah definitely need to leave it on all for this particular setting 
Now, what we're going to do is maybe uh, modify her skin just a little bit, make it glow, because I really enjoy making the skin glow. And the way that I'm going to do that, there's a few different methods, but I'm just going to use a um, local adjustment here. Click on mask, open up the color range tool again, and click here on the skin. I'm going to right click, or I'm sorry, hit the letter O so that way I can see what my mask is showing me. And I'm just going to pull this down until I get a pretty decent sampling of the skin, which seems like that's going to be really hard to do because it's not evenly lit. And that's the, the, the real challenge with using the color range tool. So I'm going to turn off my mask and try to resample uh, maybe somewhere like here and hit the letter O. And I think I'm getting a better selection of the skin this time. So I'll pull that down. It's obviously missing some of the uh, area there. But if I go ahead and pull up on the feather and hit the letter O, now we can make a little bit of an adjustment. And the way that I like to modify skin is I pull up on the uh, temperature slider just a little bit. And it makes if it, it makes skin that is a little bit more darker or tanned or has more melanin in it, it makes it glow and it gives a really nice aesthetic, uh, in my opinion. And that's like my trick for any time that I am working on uh, glamour shots or someone says, hey, make my skin glow. That's my trick. That's what I do. Now it's time to really add in like a color look. And that's where you could do a lot of different things. I'm just personally going to use a LUT on this image. And it's going to be a cooler LUT, like maybe blues. Let's see what uh, timeless. OK, so timeless is not a cooler look. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, Campari think that's how you say that I have no idea if I'm saying that right but I'm just going to pull down on the opacity of this and I'm going to change this blend mode usually what I go to is color when I'm using the LUT blend mode or I'm sorry using the LUT filter uh, but today what I'm probably going to use is soft light and what that does is it helps with contrasting the look of an image overall. The reason why I chose a cooler tone is because earlier I warmed up her skin and if I went warm on top of warm, then she would get really orange and I don't think that that would look very good. So let me go ahead and turn this off and turn it back on and you can see what it does is it adds in some contrast because that's what the soft light or the overlay blend modes do. Um, but that color is still very present and it is transforming at least the whites in the background uh, a little bit. So if I were to turn this off, you can see the background is a little bit more gray than it actually is when I turn the LUT back on. Now, again, the LUTs sometimes are way too strong, which is why it's a awesome thing that we have these opacity sliders so we can uh, pull those down or pull that down and make it make more sense for our image, which I think this looks really, really good. I'm a subtle type of guy when it comes to my edits, and this is the subtlety that I would use in this particular image. So I'm going to show you the before overall and the after. Now, I also want to show you the before and after using the slider because uh, sometimes I think we can look at a before and after by turning it off and on, and we don't realize how much we've actually transformed the image. Like if you look at the before on the left and what it looks like after all of the edits that we just went through or that I went through, this is a completely new photo. Now, because I am a person who uh, sometimes likes to go a little over. 
uh, what I really need to, I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to first uh, duplicate this. So just duplicate the layer. That way, if it doesn't work out, I could just delete a layer and it'll all be fine. Uh, and then what I'm going to do on this new layer is I'm going to add a sun, uh, sun flare. And the sun flare itself doesn't make that much sense other than the fact that if I put it over on the left hand side, it adds a bit of character to the overall image and it makes the light make more sense directionally. Because remember, the light in this image is moving from the left to the right. And we know that because there's shadow on the right side of our image, which means the opposite side of shadow is where the light is. Plus, you can look at where the highlights are and you can see that the highlights are right there. I hope that make, made sense because if it didn't, then maybe I need to do a lesson on uh, how light works overall. Um, but if you understood what I was saying, then you would know why I put that light or the sun flare on the left hand side. Now, I like the default sun flare. Sometimes it's just a little too strong. So what I do is I pull it down. Uh, I think 48 percent looks pretty good on this particular image, just enough to kind of soften that background and really add a little bit more punch and character to the image. And I could mess around with the sunshine filter that's built into here uh, to really try and get some more of that glow in there. But then I feel like that kind of kills the purpose of adding the LUT and getting that contrast in there. So I'm not even going to bother with that this time around. I'm going to leave that alone because I think that this looks good the way that it is. So I'm going to leave it there. I hope you found value in the content. If you are looking to pick up a copy of On One Photo Raw, consider using the coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20. I do make a small commission and it helps me continue to make the videos and bring free content your way. If you got questions about On One or anything that I talked about, you already know to drop a comment down below because I do get back to all of my comments. And until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.